name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings to you all in the most precious name of our common Lord, Jesus Christ. This morning I invite you, dear friends and my co-believers, for a meditation on a very important and a very powerful uh, subject of the church. the witness of god's people witness of god's people i would like to read a very a small passage from the gospel according to st john chapter 1 verses 19 to 23 and then verse 32 34 i read it for you the witness of john this is how john appeared as a witness When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, "Who are you?" he not only declared that he declared quite openly, "I am not the Christ." Well then, they asked, "Are you Elijah?" "I am not," he said. "Are you the prophet?" he answered, "No." So they said to him, "Who are you?" "We must take back an answer to those who sent us." What have you to say about yourself? So John said, I am as Isaiah prophesied, a voice that cries in the wilderness, make a straight way for the Lord. Verse 32. John also declared, I saw the spirit coming down on him from heaven like a dove and resting on him. I did not know him myself. but he who sent me to baptize with water had said to me the man on whom you see the spirit come down and rest is the one who is going to baptize with the holy spirit yes i have seen and i am the witness that he is the chosen one of god i am the witness that he is the chosen one of god praise the lord friends church to my understanding does not exist without the ongoing witness of the life and faith of the people a small word of prayer lord of grace lord of life father of our lord jesus christ we sincerely thank you lord for this precious time you have bestowed to us to meditate upon this very significant and a very very pivotal subject of the church lord you have called your servants your witnesses to proclaim the gospel of your resurrection in the shape of a living witness from their own lives their experiences the exposure they have received in your presence all that was counted lord and in particular to their life ultimately remained as a living witness that became a strong foundation for the beginning of this church enable us lord to understand the ethos of witness that how it is important in the life of the church that we continue to proclaim this gospel continue to bring witness of the resurrected lord in and around our life and our communities in our contemporary societies bless us and inspire us o oh lord In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Friends, church to my understanding is like um, a four petaled flower. Each petal has a distinct function and related to the other function. The first one is uh, I use the word Greek because the New Testament is written in Greek. So it is always a meaningful expression if we take the root word 
uh, in which the original word of god was written in the new testament martyrio a greek word means simply witness or testimony or attestation and this word which also has some uh, some related meaning to the proclamation proclaiming the gospel an important petal of the flower of the church without which the church would not exist another important feature of that arturia or the function of witness is evangelism evangelion the greek word is again to evangelize or to proclaim the gospel again though there is other word kerigma in greek for proclamation but all these come to you know to this uh, complex word called witness in our witnessing to the gospel of jesus christ there needs the function of evangelism and proclamation of the gospel the second uh, very important feature or the petal of the flower of the church is liturgy liturgy of worship worship is to perform some public service or to officiate uh, a function by the priest leading a worship service for the public which involves prayer intercession exhortation this has been a great strength of the church from the primitive days as and when they were meeting in the house prayers for the last 2000 years it has been a great strength of the church and also this is the live wire of the ongoing faith journey and this of course includes the participation of the sacraments like baptism and eucharist in the worship service the third petal of the flower of the church is diaconia service or other words ministry and today of course the word ministry you know has changed the meaning that somebody you know who comes down from a car with full white dress and very powerful person supported and you know and followed by several group of people is a minister a minister has a status today he has power and authority but the root word diaconia has no such authority it is just an act of bending if you go back to re- reenact the function what jesus has done he was he bent and took the bowl of water and started washing the feet of his disciples that is the diaconia john the baptist says i am not worthy even to bend to unloose the straps of the sandals of jesus even to bend so the act of bending is the main function our main event in the ministry or in diaconia and the word uh, diaconia has much relation with the community because diaconia has to be rendered only in the midst of a community finally my fourth petal of the flower of the church is koinonia means uh, the fellowship which is also equally important a prayer that you do it in your own house but a community communion community a fellowship is something that you know you you uh, you receive more strength and spirituality in the fellowship of your colleagues and co-believers and that becomes a strength so therefore worship witness service and fellowship are the four important features in the life of the church and when i said the title witness of god's people earlier also we have discussed in god's people may, may mean many things you know god's people if you call cleros the they are clergy who are the anointed one or the ordained people god's people sometimes in the old testament are prophets 
they are called the servants of god the men of god sometimes in the latter uh, days we call it as a servants those who are lay leos leos are the people who have some identity in the community who are not ordained but they also have their own functions to be closer to god and to guide people as elders my message today is concerned with those people who are committed themselves to engage in proclaiming the gospel and uh, uh, the diaconal service to people at large you have already seen how john the baptist began his ministry in proclaiming himself that he is uh, the witness to the one who was to come that is jesus the christ the c- conclusion of the gospel according to st luke chapter 24 verse 48 almost the climax you will uh, read it the beginning from jerusalem and jesus recognizes them and says you are witnesses to this you are witnesses to this you know the if you go a little early he says jesus then opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them so you see how it is written that the christ would suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that in his name repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations beginning from jerusalem you are witnesses to this not only here if you go through the acts of the apostles in the beginning and it is very clearly said that these two books gospel according to st luke and uh, book of uh, the acts of the apostles were written by st luke himself therefore he uses this word so frequently and particularly uh, acts 1 and uh, chapter 1 verse 8 but you will receive power at the time of ascension at the time of ascension and as they were gathered together and jesus says it is not for you to know times and dates that the father has decided by his own authority but you will receive power when the holy spirit comes on you and then you will be my witnesses again the same word is used you are my witnesses and you will be my witnesses friends sometime uh, when you refer to the history of the church and history of the society you cannot separate the history of the church and the community wherein when russia was under the strong communist rule you know all the Uh, churches institutions particularly the universities they were all closed and uh, they began to desecrate the statues of uh, mother mary or uh, lord jesus etc and there was uh, you know in the center of a very big city uh, the statue of jesus you know open arms of jesus and uh, on a fine morning people saw that there were no hands to the statue that means they have cut off the uh, they broke the hands of jesus <laughs> after some time underneath it is written christ has no arms but are yours christ has no arms now but yours well friends later on you find that you know not only his arms believers acted as uh, his voice his love his care his forgiveness and etc which changed you know the world so radically today in russia there is a tremendous transformation in the community that the church is so beloved and darling by the people there friends in the uh, you know uh, you find that in the biblically speaking from the beginning you know there are people who are chosen by god who are shaped and designed by god himself to proclaim you know the witness to god that's why i put it under the caption 
the witness of the people who demonstrated the courage witness of the people who demonstrated the courage if you go to genesis chapter 39 you know you find that joseph is very very you know loved by me in the old testament because a young uh, kind of lad very innocent person you know when he goes to carry the food to his brothers who are in the wilderness you know, you know very innocently he shows the colorful you know cassock that his father has uh, uh, you know um, stitched for him uh, not knowing the kind of envy that was propped up in the minds of his brothers and uh, as a victim later on to that envy and uh, joseph was uh, you know he was put in the uh, deep pit and later on they did not want to kill him after all they were his brothers and finally they sold him off to the midianites and see genesis 39 you know verse 3 where the midianites you know sold it him to potiphar uh, the egyptian where uh, potiphar found out you know the knowledge and uh, the kind of uh, wisdom that this uh, young man was exhibiting you see genesis 39 verse 3 follow the master egyptian master potiphar when his master saw how yahweh was with him and how yahweh made everything succeed that he turned his hand to he was pleased with joseph and made him his personal attendant and see the grace of god was explicitly you know Uh, explicitly shown uh, or evidently shown on a person in his behavior in his life and witness uh, that he was chosen by god and later on of course when the place is changed i am not going into details of joseph's life uh, and again in joseph uh, genesis 41 you will find again uh, when he uh, was placed at the pharaoh Well, see 41 38 verse 38 Joseph's promotion Pharaoh and all his ministers approved of what he said then Pharaoh asked his ministers can we find any other man like this possessing the spirit of God so Pharaoh said to Joseph seeing that God has given you knowledge of all this there can be no one as intelligent as wise as you you shall be my chancellor and all my people shall respect your orders only this throne shall set me above you she otherwise everything was bestowed to joseph what i am trying to show here is how god chooses certain uh, you know persons to be his witnesses and there was no distortion there was no perversion there was no confusion in joseph he received the strength he received the grace he received the spirit of god and he continued to live to bring glory only to god a similar character we find uh, you know a, a very powerful witness in the life of uh, you know daniel i would say there was no kind of perversion in the life of a person like daniel but of course before daniel came into the picture uh, you will find uh, Uh, these uh, shadrach uh, meshach and abednego already in uh, chapter 3 where king nebuchadnezzar found out you know some uh, young jewish boys from the you know the captive uh, boys in his own country and then he put he has brought them but unfortunately these three were so adamant to him of course in his understanding refused to Uh, bow and prostrate before his statue and then as a result you know nebuchadnezzar listening to his associates there and put them in the fiery furnace king nebuchadnezzar you know then the boys these three uh, young persons filled with the spirit of god and i will read their uh, to to see their uh, you know kind of uh, power and strength in god what they have exhibited in daniel uh, third chapter you will read it you know 
your question hardly requires an answer god king to king nebuchadnezzar if our god the one who serve is able to save us from the burning fiery furnace and from your power o king he will save us and that means our god is able to save us our god is worthy to save us our god is a mighty god that he can save from both from the fiery furnace and also from you that is what uh, you know the power of witness that these three shadrach meshach abednego have exhibited if our god the one who serve is able to save us from the burning fiery furnace and from your power o king he will save us then at later on you will find that the 28th verse third chapter daniel finally when these three were in the company of a son of man the angel whom of course king did not send which which is implied that you know he was protected by god sent the angel there verse uh, verse 28 it is read blessed be the god of you know shadrach meshach and abednego and king says that he has sent his angel to rescue his servants who putting uh, their trust in him so this is uh, you know where the witness really brings out a new power you know brings out the glory of god daniel similarly later on the king is changed now is king darius and um, again people talked a lot of things against daniel and the king was um, unfortunately uh, he was carried away with their advices and put daniel in the den of the lions but king was sympathetic sympathetic to daniel because daniel has some you know grace on his life because he is the man you read that in daniel 6 chapter verses 10 follow he is the one who makes three times each day he continued to fall on his knees praying and giving praise to god as he had always done that this is what made others to be more envious on daniel but then at some point when daniel was put into the into the um then of the lions daniel says oh king live forever my god sent his angel who sealed the lions and uh, the king was so surprised to see how daniel was alive my god sent his angels who sealed the lions jaws they did me no harm in his in his sight i am blameless i have never done you any wrong either o king and the king was overjoyed and he ordered ordered and everyone to accept to accept the the god of daniel as the powerful most powerful god to worthy to be worshiped and these are some of the witnesses we find in the old testament there are plenty of course the faith of the prophets and a lot of uh, you know kings who exhibited their uh, commitment then when it when you come into the new testament the very beginning of the gospel you find john the baptist what i have read now the witnesses i have baptized you with water but the one who is to come will baptize you in the holy spirit that is the witness which he said and then finally he says yes i have seen and i am witness that he is the chosen one of god the abhishekta christus you know the messiah the messiah he is the one uh, who is to come you know there are lot of uh, other uh, witnesses to find when it comes to the normal level of the people we find uh, you know these are the people who receive the miracle miraculous strength of god by which they are healed very simple persons like in john's gospel you know fifth chapter the healing of a sick man for 38 years he was lying on the on the uh, pavement of the uh, the the pool at bedzada 
and then jesus came made a long uh, you know exp- uh, you know explanation is there and uh, to cut it to short one he, he asked him to raise and to fold his bed and walk and then there are people who are watching at it and immediately went and reported this matter to pharisees and they came here to see who is he the one who healed you who is jesus you know in chapter 5 verse 12 we will find that in st john's gospel and who is jesus that is the question always that comes into their mind who is the man who said to you pick up your mat and walk and he is an ordinary guy and he was not very clear but for sure he knew that the gentleman who came asked him to fold his bed that's what he told that's what he told if you are not willing to listen i can't help verse 30 chapter 5 verse 38 and 39 it says you know the you have never heard his voice you have never seen the shape and his word finds no home in you because you do not believe in the one who has sent been sent if you are unwilling your minds are closed you can't accept this similarly the blind beggar chapter 9 you will find the same kind of witness chapter 9 verse 11 and they were inquiring about him how this whole thing happened then how do your eyes come to be open the man called jesus he answered the witness is the man called jesus made a paste daubed my eyes and uh, he said to me go and wash at uh, siloam siloam means sent he was you know a healed person and they approached the parents and parents were parents were also adamant to say why you are you asking me he is an uh, he is grown enough you go and ask him and then <laughs> verse 28 there is a climax the blind beggar who was healed he says do you want to become his disciples too why are you showing so anxiety do you want to become disciples of jesus and these are the kind of witnesses we find you know in the new testament friends the second category are besides witness of the people those who demonstrated the courage of god i find witness of the people who are filled with the holy spirit in matthew chapter 16 we find uh, you know this kind of uh, uh, matthew 16 mark 8th chapter luke 9th chapter you know we will find uh, the peter you know one among the disciples uh, when jesus asks a question who do you think people are saying about me who do people say the son of man is and peter peter without any hesitation he says you are the christ he said the son of the living god you are the christ son of the living god he is a very powerful witness consciously or unconsciously peter of course he immediately made that confession the profession of his pre faith that is a witness in new testament you know there is an order a line of witnesses at the resurrection of course john's gospel again 20th chapter uh, at the resurrection st thomas was not there when jesus appeared bringing the celestial peace upon them and finally when thomas was also found you find that at the 28th verse the first ever a confession or a statement of faith made in the history of the christian church and thomas he looks at jesus my lord and my god and he discovers the you know jesus as the christos the messiah the lord adonai and the god elohim in his own personal life my lord and my god is a very very uh, courageous witness in the jewish community suddenly they cannot ascribe you know the power and the name identity of yahweh to any human being but he said here my lord means my yahweh adonai my god elohim are the two 
very powerful ascriptions to God. And Stephen, in the life of Stephen, of course, is another very electrifying, uh, you know, witness of someone who appears to be a kind of vulnerable in his life, but it remains, you know, more than 2,000 years in the history of the church. And we find Acts of the Apostles in the 8th chapter, how uh, Stephen was stoned, you know, to death. And before that, Stephen had a vision. Stephen had a vision, 8th chapter, verse 56, 7th chapter. Verse 56 and 57, see, I can see heaven thrown open, he said, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. You know, they were having the Christu Darshana. You know, the vision of the, the Lord, the resurrected Lord in their life. Stephan, Stephanos means crown, the crown of witness, I would say. I can see heaven thrown open. And the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God is a very powerful witness that he was making. Paul was, of course, witness to, you know, all this act of, uh, you know, the martyrdom of Stephan. But the real witness also comes from Paul, St. Paul, Acts 22, 6 to 16. Of course, you can read all that. He tells several places again and again his witness and particularly Acts chapter 22, verse 15 and 16. Because you are to be his witness before all mankind, testifying to what you have seen and heard. This is what he received from Lord and what he has conveyed to the people that he received that you know new sight, new vision. A transition from you know his previous life as a as a fervent zoo, Jew and uh, entering into a life of a new Christian. A very powerful, constructive transformation and transition in the life of Saul to become Paul, you know, without whom 14 epistles, you know, in the Bible, the you know, big chunk in the New Testament has not been with us. Very powerful witness. Every word, every expression, every uh, you know, sentence that was made in his epistles, you know, has a meaning to convey to us, uh, ultimately leading us the cross, resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The third category, of course, is witness of the people in the contemporary world. I don't want to explain person by person, but I would like to remind you, who are these people, you know, what are they, what did they do in the life of the church? Watchman Ni, Kagawa, you know, Bonhoeffer, Pandita Ramabai, Oral Roberts, Billy Graham, Sadhu Sundar Singh, Brother Bhakta Singh, Richard Wurmbrand, you know, Vedanaikam Samuel Azariah, Abdul Masi of Kashmir, or all these people from, you know, bottom to the top, I would say in the world, you, know, you have seen witnesses most powerfully stirred the minds of the people of millions of the world, drawing them towards the cross of Christ. On the other category, of course, witness of the people who empowered, you know, the then contemporary society, like that of Martin Luther at the time of Reformation. Here I stand, he's a great witness, you know, who said, I have no fear. For the sake of God, I am only saying that his word is important than all practices, he said. Martin Luther King Jr., you know, we shall overcome, was his slogan. Which shook the, you know, not only uh, the context of the North American, you know, liberation, but also the whole world heard, you know, his anthem as we shall overcome, we shall overcome. Nelson Mandela is another great personality, you know. You know, these are the people who are imbibed with the Christian spirit and Christian zeal, who grew, you know, as Christian uh, children. I heard him at the World Council of Churches in Harare. His witness in his expression on the very keynote address, he said, I grew in the Christian boarding homes where my teachers, my wardens taught us how to sing, 
how to read the scripture how to memorize the words how to pray and that became an unshakable foundation in his life to become a nelson mandela you know a black son there are of course che guevara valesa and many many people you know who moved with the people who electrified them there was a purpose to bring liberation to the people witness of diaconia the people who witnessed you know through their diaconia the names are very very familiar like mother teresa not only her personal witness but also through the missionaries of charity you know they went and embraced the lepers and they carried you know all these uh, kind of uh, uh, destitutes on their backs to give a good evening in their life they carried the little one orphans who were thrown out and they have given new life to them new hope to them like brother andrew the teze community you know which stood between you know the warring field it is like uh, you know another red cross like people bringing the brought there and he were, they were healed and today teze has become one of the most powerful spiritual you know uh, place of chanting you know to which lead us you know closer to the law to the lord from indian context that raidas kadar you know whose vision has brought 100 and above years of a medical mission in this country which dominates you know these are the people who came as powerful witnesses in the world friends witness through the centuries shaped the church as authentic community because of suffering and sacrifice strife and struggles the tension between the believed and experienced people in the church and the offshoot of it is the witness witness that is the kerigma or martyria qualify them as the path makers to the next generation but for them the next generational faith has not come into the practice it is my parental witness led me to go to the church you know to be obedient loyal and sincere children joining the singing of the songs of faith and they are my heroes of witness it is witness that as kerigma qualify them as the change makers and path makers to the next generation friends participation in the faith and constitution through the work of the holy spirit the proclamation of the faith experience or the three events define the witness or probably i would like to repeat again participation in the faith and our formation through the works of the holy spirit the proclamation of the faith experience and sharing this faith experience only define and make an authentic community of christ i use the word authentic community it is not denying community around us but we would say a qualitative community a community which has an essential witness in and through the life of the people our participation in christ's body through the you know works of the holy spirit or the inspiration then the church's witness is nothing but reconciliation its mission is healing the humanity and the creation friends quickly to conclude self offering and self emptying are the two you know natures uh, the characterize the witness of the people because self emptying a witnessing person cannot boast he can only say what you know who he is shedding or leaving this witness the desires one's own conversion is called metanoia is repentance therefore metanoia that means the repentance and martyrio that means witness cannot be separated cannot be separated worship and fellowship service 
and proclamation of the gospel or that is why i said four petals of this beautiful flower suffering and tears cannot be avoided in the witness suffering and cry you know of the people sometimes become more more powerful dominating area of the witness i would like quickly to mention about the cry of the people in iran the, during our contemporary society where in 120 university students were just you know their 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 throats were cut and people have witnessed the bloodshed and we are silent sometimes we cannot intervene you are not there and in such a helpless and a very vulnerable state 120 young girls brought out a powerful witness you know the hidden imam says repent and return to islam there is a group hanging sometimes in iran some 1960s you have seen the similar you know kind of persecution in china a bitter cup you know the people have taken terrorist attack on christians and the churches in syria you have seen people ran from the country everywhere to everywhere thanks to the leaders who opened their doors in their nations to receive these people who came as refugees from syria iraq is no less the land of abraham and this is how you have seen the witness i would like to at the conclusion bring out one of my most admiring personality and who inspired my ministry is no less than bishop anandarao samuel you know after finishing one of the worship services the early morning as he was traveling and his car was stopped by a truck and then petrol was was pushed thrown into the car and the car was lit and virtually bishop saw his wife burning and he has burnt his hands trying to you know rescue her but there was no positive result within a few days you know she had to die as a martyr in the church in our contemporary society as a young you know theological student having witnessed it changed my thinking about the ministry 40 years of my ministry 40 countries i have traveled and uh, you know there was a selfishness by someone within the church who joined hands with the then political forces here in and around my church context i was put in 40 days in the remand no voice from the church i don't know whether church was so cowardized that there no statement was made but still i have taken it into my stomach in silence because everything is given by god when he has raised us it is god given when you are put in this kind of trouble it is god given the martyrs and saints those who journeyed in this pilgrimage have left a legacy for the future progeny friends the cross each one earned or the crown that each one has earned through suffering may not have jewel studded on their crowns but they are decorated and washed with every drop of tears that they shed silently in obedience to the call of god each drop has an expression of forgiveness each drop has the power of healing towards reconciliation witness in suffering is not vulnerability but a vibrant expression of their victory in god let us recapture that event that function of the church continue to witness for the sake of the lord in hebrews and paul says in 12th chapter with so many witnesses in a great cloud on every side of us we too then should throw off everything that hinders us 
perhaps continue to witness for the glory of Christ. Amen. Shall we pray? Lord of grace, we stand before your throne, O Lord, seeking your intervention in our lives to give us a new courage and enable us to practice a new spirituality, to experience a new kind of suffering. Lord, it is in you we receive this strength and this courage to continue to witness for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.